Well, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Paula Matus, and welcome to the session sponsored by the Argentina Investment Trade Promotion Agency, created in Argentina more than games to the world. On this panel, seven companies will be sharing with you those recent projects they are working on, as well as the services they provide to other companies at the gaming industry, such as localization or translation services. Let's begin. First, allow me to introduce you the companies and the speakers, and then we will enjoy their deck videos. In first place, InGames is a dedicated company to the development of mobile games for iOS, Android, and HTML5. They have released hits like Logic Dots and Logic Traces with over 1 million downloads in each game. They are currently working on the Home Valley project, where players can meet, play mini games, craft objects to decorate their homes, and get unique rooms. And here is Matthias Ini, CEO from InGames. In second place, Rosario Traducciones y Servicios is an Argentina based translation company specialized in English into Spanish and Portuguese localization services. And here he is, Juan Pablo Orlop, Business Development Assistant. In third place, Wanayant is a company with a long track record working in games, apps, motion graphics, and digital campaigns for some of the most prestigious brands in the world. Now they're working on their own IPS like Circus Heroes. And here he is, Alejandro Heros, co-founder. In first place, Parenthesics is an independent studio from Mendoza. They started in uh, 2018 by a team of game design, art, and music lovers who want to create narrative driving games with universally emotive themes that captive the player and inspires them to gain a better perspective on how to achieve a better well-being. And instead of Julian Lacera, game director, it's a colleague of, of, of him. In fifth place, Red Wolves Studios is a studio based in Buenos Aires that develops and offers services in mobile, console, PC, and web games using Unity and other languages, platforms, and frameworks. And here he is, Juan Martin Bartomioli, in charge of business development. In sixth place, Terra Localization is a company that provides localization, QA, testing, voiceover, and culturalization cons consultancy services. They are a nimble and flexible team that helps game dev studios and publishers localize their content into multiple languages. They operate on different time zones and they can process from small to large volume requests. And here she is, Florencia Fole, Business Development Manager. And finally, Emi Cortez is an educational and a simulation video games for children and children with special needs named after the main character who interrelates with her twin brother Juan, born in Argentina, and a group of friendly and funny friends, Lola from Spain, Martin from Mexico, and Rinku from India. It is important to mention that all games are free of violence, endowed with great aesthetic harmony, originality, and intellectual motivation. And here she is, Mariana Garcia Gilisasti, founder. Well, Let's continue with the company's presentation, and then if you have questions, you can write them down to the comment section so all the speakers will be able to answer them after. Thanks. Thank you. 
I'm Pablo Orloff and I work at Rosario Traducciones as a business development assistant. Today, I'm here to talk about the importance of localization in our globalized world. First, let me tell you more about my company. Rosario Traducciones is an Argentinian localization agency located in the city of Rosario that has more than 20 years of experience in the localization industry. Although we work with many languages, we specialize in translating content from English into Spanish for Latin America and Brazilian Portuguese. Given that we live in a globalized world, we tend to think that reaching out customers is way simpler than it actually is. One of the many things that we usually ignore when we think about potential customers is their language. People assume that if the product is in a global language such as English, the customer will find a way around it if they don't speak it. That is very far from being true, since a recent study showed that 9 out of 10 global users will ignore your product if it's not in their native language. Also, it's not only about the language of the product itself, but the channels of communication that potential customers use to get to that product. For example, did you know that 72.1% of customers spend most of or all the time on websites in their own language? Or did you also know that most of, that almost one in five people say that they never browse in language other than their own? What it all means is that your potential audience doesn't speak your language in which you're publishing your content, you're missing out on reaching a way bigger market than you currently are. Let's take, for example, the gaming industry. We can all agree that it's currently the biggest entertainment industry by far. Last year, gaming generated more than twice the global turnover of the music and film industry combined. Now, if you're part of this industry and you see how big it is, I would like you to think about how much more you could generate by reaching new markets by overcoming language barriers. How could you get to those potential clients that do not speak your language? Well, translating your content into other languages is the first step in the right direction. But I would like to point out that translation only gets you so far. Ideally, you should localize your content. Why? Because translation is about message and localization is about the experience. Localization means creating a local and enjoyable end-to-end -end customer experience. Here at Rosario Traducciones, we localize all type of content every day, from apps and emails to software and complete web pages. We also offer specialized services for usual manuals and certified professionals for that are required for legal documents. We're also experienced in offering multimedia services such as subtitling and voiceover. Other areas where we can provide are localizing e-learning content, transcreation services, which is marketing localization, and also making sure that your content follows accessibility regulations. Some additional services that we offer together with the previous one are interpreting, proofreading, glossary and style guide creation, project management, and localization consulting and quality assurance. Now, I would like to show you past and current clients that we have worked with. For example, you can find big tech companies such as Google, Amazon, and Microsoft, but also other industries and even national and local government agencies. Thank you for your time.
Circus Heroes is a very engaging tower-defense blast, as we call it, because it combines the strategy of the genre, casual features, a lot of shows, and a ridiculous story. We try to craft fresh and funny content for the genre, with a beautiful artwork, a faster and a more casual gameplay interaction for a tower of defense, we add a lot of content to discover and enjoy the game's experience. We believe that Circus Heroes has the potential to become a great game. Hello everyone, I'm Juan Martin from Redwall Studios. I'm a studio manager. We aim to be a leading studio in digital entertainment production. So thank you very much for watching. We are based in Buenos Aires, Argentina, founded in 2017. We have gathered a whole team of senior game devs with more than 10 years of experience in the industry. We develop mainly mobile games, but we also have developed console, PC, and web games using Unity as our main engine, but also using other languages, platforms, and frameworks. 
networks. We have been working recently closely with Ubisoft Paris in the Might and Magic Chess Royale game. This is the first massive real-time 100-player auto battler that has been published worldwide already by Ubisoft in January 2020. We are also working in this game called Armor Battle Tanks that is going to get launched by the end of this year by Intellivision in their new Amico console. This is a, a project that we have been working alongside our partner Lost Mesa Entertainment and it's a local multiplayer game up to four players based on the original 80s IP uh, called Armor Battle Tanks. Marvel Legends is a 3D physics mobile game that recovers the magic of the traditional Marvel game that we used to play as kids. This was our first game developed by ourselves, our first IP development, and it was published worldwide a couple of years ago by Spawn Digital Publishing. Please join me on the trailer of this game. The Legends is coming. The Millennium Game comes back renewed and with lots of action for you to break new records. Play, have fun, challenge, alone, with your family or with your friends. Show your skills, precision, and aim. Choose your marvel and join now. Legends is awaiting. We love marble games, we love physics games, and right now we are working in, with Marble Strike. This is like the second marble game. In this time, we are working in a 3D hyper casual real time multiplayer game in which players flick their marble throughout the battle arenas, trying to slam into others while avoiding being hit and knocked out of the arena. This game is about survival and being the last marble standing, but we are going to include other battle modes. Uh, as I said, we love this kind of skill game and we are aiming to have a soft launch by the end of the year or a couple of months ahead. Another previous game the, that we have developed is Aces Match is a 2D and 3D mobile match three game in which player, players have to travel and collect vehicles around the world, combining renewable energies while driving safely through the roads. This has, um, we, we have made this game with our partner in Argentina. We have made a soft launch only in Argentina, but we expect to have a, a, a soft launch worldwide soon. Here's the, the trailer of the game. Lastly, we have Wild Magic Project that we have been working for the last two years. Um, it's a very, very early stage project. We have only a prototype, but we have developed a strong Bible, a strong IP with all the characters. Well, finally, here's our core team. Uh, I'm founder and a studio manager with more than 15 years producing original IPs and providing high quality services. And I'm very lucky uh, to lead this passionate team uh, with Anibal as technical director, David as art director, Agustin as our head programmer. We also have Mylene as our lead to the artist and Federico as our game design, designer and producer. Thank you very much for watching. Please feel free to contact me anytime. Feel free right now to uh, ask me any question. We are here for that.
This is Mariana and this is my game. I just show you my game and uh, it has four characters from different countries. The main character is Amy Cortez from Argentina. Uh, she has a twin brother and Juan, named Juan, and then a group of friends from different countries. And I show you uh, the games for, for the PC and the games for the app, which is in the App Store and in the uh, Google Store. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, Mariana. Well, uh, all the speakers are free if they want to add some comments of their own projects and or services. As well, we are be aware of the comments from the audience um, and try to, to answer their questions. So thank you. What I, what I say is we just go one by one and then we just do like a one-on-one -on -one interview right now. So, uh, Gabriela, where, would you like to talk about yourself in parenthesis? Here, I'll... Yeah, sure. Um, I'm here with Camila. We're replacing uh, Julian Laceras because uh, he was unavailable. And... Um, we are working on two different projects with two different groups. Uh, one is a puzzle game that was uh, the first trailer of our presentation. And the second one is a roguelite uh, thriller game. <laughs> More. Um, and uh, Camila is in charge of answering the, yes, hi. Um, um, if you want, questions. we can give a little bit mm -hmm. of uh, background story that um, you already saw in the in the slides, but a little bit more just to to wrap it up. Um, we are a studio that started uh, two years ago um, with the core team that is uh, Gabriela's team, and they started working in on parallel. They get to know each other and how they work, and the flow was very good. So. Um, their leader, like their founder, let's say, leader is very much, but their founder, Julian, he then started mm -hmm. uh, working in a jam last year here in Mendoza, uh, Argentina, and he gathered a, a lot bigger team for the development of Urban Explorers that is the game I'm currently a producer for. So yeah, that's a little bit of background information about how we get here and how we are like right now working on two different projects that, that with two dedicated teams for each of them. So yeah, if you have any question about um, Parallel, the, the puzzle game, uh, you can ask Gabriela. And if you have any question about uh, Urban Explorers, the rock-like game, uh, you can ask me. Okay. Um... But let's go. Let's continue next with Matthias. You want to tell us about you? And okay. Go? Yes. Matthias. Matthias. My name is Matthias Ini. Well, um, I have been in the game industry for over 20 years right now, developing games. I am a game developer. Um, I have been working in big companies before, in one in Barcelona that was called Five Ants where we developed Boom Bang TV, which was a virtual world for web, like Club Penguin or Habotel. It was over, it was online for over 10 years. And then we jumped to mobile and made Tiny Thief, which was a, a very big project that was uh, published by Provio, in Provio Stars. It, it was the uh, publisher uh, section of Provio. And then a few years ago, I have found, founded uh, In Games, which is my company, where we have launched several games on the App Store and on Google Play. We also make HTML5 games. And actually, we are working on a new project, which is called Home Ballet, um, where you have your avatar, you have your houses, you have rooms, and you can buy objects or you can play to craft your own objects for free. Um, 
so you can invite your friends, you can go to your friend's house, and you, you, we, we have a lot of uh, new things that we are thinking on, on, on the product. You can dress yourself and have different, you can customize your avatar. So we, we, we hope it's the next hit on, on mobile, or, but we, we are very happy with the results and we are planning to launch the game next year uh, to make a soft launch on April, May next year. Excellent. Excellent. Let's get back to the screen right here. All right. Who's next? Florencia. Tell us about the uh, localization. We did get a little explainer there, but go ahead and, and talk about yourself. And uh... Sure. Well, thank you very much for this opportunity. Hi, everyone. <clears throat> good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. Not sure where you're seeing this from. Um, I'm Florencia Fole. I'm based in Buenos Aires, Argentina. I'm part of the Terra Localizations family since 2014. I've been in the localization industry for more than 10 years now. I started as a project manager and account manager, and that helped me a lot to better understand the whole process from the beginning on to the end. Um, we have a multilingual team and we cover um, a 24 hour, we offer a 24 hour service and we work with native linguists that have a background in the gaming industry um, that are scattered all over the world. And we are currently working with different uh, publishers and developers. We're working on mobile games, apps, and even um, online store content into several languages. We're currently working on 20 languages, but in case that you're interested in, in any other specifics, we can definitely talk um, a little for further on that. On the presentation, you have my email, but I'll leave it over Discord as well in case if you, you want to contact me and uh, ask any other questions in particular of your game or any other related uh, topics on localization. Yes, thank you. Thank you yeah, for the um, opportunity. Every, they, everyone that's in this panel is also in the Discord. You can join the Discord at discord.gg slash indie game business. Let's talk next to Ale. There, there, there Hi he is. Hi, everyone. He was yes. hiding. Sorry, I have bad connection <laughs> here. So I want to try to be specific. If you are hearing me not so well, I will maybe put out my put off my camera and just speak. Well, we have a, an indie studio with legal basis in Estonia. We have been working for games for more than four years. Personally, I have been working in digital business and advertising for more than up to date, maybe 20 years. I look so young, I know. But the real thing is four years ago, uh, I, I dare and I have the challenge to, to go with a business partner to try to, to buy this new kind of studio. Uh, we have the opportunity and luck to be accelerated by a gay founder, uh, an Estonian uh, incubator company that worked for more than five years accelerating a studio in, in Tallinn, in Estonia and in Kuala Lumpur, different ways. Uh, at that moment, we have the opportunity to have maybe uh, some of the best mentor of the world, my business partner, have the opportunity to travel to Estonia for three months and, and have that, that kind of uh, acceleration. So from there to now, we have been working in a lot of Android games and trying to launch our own IPs. Uh, we launched uh, a few weeks ago one of our first game that is Sweet Meat Crush, that is a casual cartoonish with this kind of dark humor runner, that uh, it has a special feature that is not only this, the, this kind of humor, something different. Uh, you could stream directly from the game to Twitch. And we are dealing uh, some month, yes, and some month, not so, with the extension of Twitch to have this kind of real time interaction with, with the viewers. So that is something new, but the same that we have already launched. Right now we have a, another project that is Circus Heroes, that is the, the, the game that you have seen the, the trailer a, a few minutes ago. What we are trying to look for a publisher, we really believe that it's a different kind of, of Tower of Fans, we say Tower of Fans Plus, like something 
a little different with different kind of content for for the genre with different features different small mechanics that we do this little twist to the game so we are really open to to have conversation with platform and publisher so thanks for your time excellent thank you so much let's see here who do we have next one martin <laughs> Juan Martin. Juan Martin. Yes. I am terrible Thank you. with the ex with the uh, Hello, pronunciations. <laughs> no worries. No worries, no problem. Hello everyone. I am Juan Martin Bartomioli, studio manager of Red Wall Studios. Like I said in my presentation, we are based here in Buenos Aires, Argentina. Thank you very much for Thank you very much for this opportunity to present, uh, to show a little bit of our skills and also present some of our um, games. We are here looking for new partners offering our services and also looking for publishers uh, who might be interested in our games. Um, and well, feel free to ask me anything. I'm, I have a, a couple of meetings um, till now and it was and it's becoming a great show to, so yeah, far right now. Thank you so much, and thank so you for thank being you very on much. here. We appreciate it big time. Okay, Paula, you're up next. Let's talk about you. Well, I'm from the Argentina Invest and Trade Promotion Agency. And what we do is to have Argentine companies to start new contacts uh, at the foreign markets, uh, especially uh, uh, Latin America, but also Europe and United States. That's why we decided to participate at the GB, uh, um, IGB. So we are very thankful for this opportunity. And I hope this has been like a really good opportunity for the companies to make new contacts, do business, and get to know uh, and for their talents and their projects. Thank you very much. Sure. Thank you so much. We appreciate all the hard work. Uh, Mariani, you did talk a little bit earlier about your game, but go ahead. Let's let's hear about you. I think you're you're muted. Yeah, that mute button it gets uh, me every time. Yes. <laughs> Yes, well, uh, my name is Mariana. I'm based here in Santa Fe, Argentina, and I'm the creator of the, this game called Emi Cortez, after the name Emi Cortez, after the main character, and it's for small kids and kids with special needs. And um, the main character is from Argentina. Uh, she has a twin brother called Juan and a group of friends from different par parts of the world. What I intended to do is uh, no matter from which part of the world you are, you can be friends. The kids has the same, the same needs, uh, the same everything. You can be friends for, from boys and girls from the different parts of the world. And um, that's why I started uh, developing a, a game for, for PC then uh, a game uh, for uh, mobile. And my intention is to uh, design uh, different um, games uh, based on the needs of the, of the persons, or, or of, the, of the people that ask me to do. Uh, also, uh, the graphics of the game can be um, used uh, for the different platforms, uh, like such as uh, web, um, uh, HTML, five, uh, whatever. And um, what I'm looking for is uh, for publishers and funding. Okay, thank you very much for, for listening to my, to me. Thank you so much. And I love that color of your wall in the background. Oh, thank I you. That. That, is just, <laughs> that is dramatic thank you very much. there. I All right, one. Juan I Pablo. Have Frida Kalos. I have Frida Kalos. And oh, here, let's, in the, let's get up yes. there again. Oh, uh, yeah. That, that's neat. Yes. <laughs> that's nice. Yes. yes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Juan Pablo, how's it going? Hi. Hi, everyone. It's doing very fine. So I work at uh, Rosario Traducciones, which is a localization company based in the city of Rosario, Argentina. Um, we have over 20 years of experience in the localization industry 
And as you could see before in my presentation, we have a very wide range of services that we offer for any kind of client that is looking to reach a wider and more global audience. We have very special services such as um, compli uh, compliance consulting, e-learning and trust creation for marketing services. So feel free to ask any question if you're interested in any of our services. Excellent, thank you so much. All right, uh, Camila, did you wanna talk some more or? No, you're fine, okay, excellent. All right, so let's just, I'm just gonna ask some random questions. So what are some of the advantages of working with teams in Argentina? Any anybody can answer. Just field it, field it. First person that talks wins. <laughs> yes. I'm going to start with this one. Uh, I feel very identified when you ask this question. Thank you. Um, I think that there are two key things working with the team in Argentina. One is the um, the the language or the cultural um, affinity with the, all the countries in America and Europe. Um, we have very similar cultures. And the other one is the, the level of skill of our team. We, we lead very passionate and skilled teams in this region. And we are always trying to improve and, and get better. That's, uh, for instance, my, my point of view. Excellent. Uh, anyone else want to? What? I, I know, know you've got to have some opinions, to add. right? Some people. Yeah, and I <laughs> wanted to ask that. Oh, sorry, Mariana, go ahead and then. I know, go ahead, go ahead, no problem. <laughs> yeah, that okay. we have a really strong community over here and we have really qualified professionals in the industry. And given the circumstances that everyone is working remotely, that we have already validated that this um, way of working is actually working for everyone. Um, so you can have access to a pool of resources and professionals that have vast experience in the industry and have working in amazing projects, both for local companies and for international companies. So I think that's a big plus to, to work with with people from Argentina and studios from Argentina. So everyone's working remotely. Are, are, is everyone on lockdown in there or people are just like avoiding it on purpose or? Yeah, we're in lockdown, especially well in Buenos Aires and in the main cities, um, the, the lockdown is pretty strict, um, but yeah. Uh, there are some other parts that it's a little bit flexible and are getting the chance to go out a little bit more. But yeah, everyone is still in lockdown since we're going through winter right now and wow. we are still waiting for the curve to at least um, be flattened, you know. Yeah, well, we don't know what our curve's doing up here. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not doing what it should be doing, but okay. So uh, anybody else want to field it? I know Mariana. Right, Mariana! Yes. Okay. Okay. Yes. Yes. It, it, it's uh, you know we have uh, very good professionals here in every aspect of the video games, translations, uh, arts. We, really, we have a very good, very good uh, professionals, and it's very important that here we have a, a very um, acceptations of the video games still. <sighs> Uh, working a lot, but um, we have a, a, a lot of help from, from the government, especially the, the national government, because without their help, uh, we cannot go, go on and we cannot access access to the to the, these events. But um, well, anyway, we we can we can do really a very good uh, work, and mm -hmm. uh, all the persons around the world uh, really say that we have a really a very good levels of, of working. Well, so 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 you were just talking about like you without government help. So among that, plus what what are some of the other challenges that you that you all face in Argentina? Money. Money. Yes. Everybody. <laughs> I want that money. Yeah. Throw yes. us your money, please. 
So yeah. like it, so so like what what um it's for us like, for us is 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 kind of expensive everything because all the um, all the prices are uh, in dollars. Right. So for us, for example, buy one dollar is is quite expensive. Uh -huh. So uh, the 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 very the very first step to cross is to have access uh, or to to hire a, another another studio or, or whatever because everything is is in dollars. So so uh, and most of the studios are small and mm -hmm. they are struggling to have money to hire new persons or to to hire another studios to program or whatever to, to do the, the, the translations or the art or whatever because everything is is in dollars right that's the so main I, 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 I don't know like what things cost there so like how much is a gallon of gas how how much we we have Two or three uh, companies, uh -huh. mainly is YPF is the is the company from from the, the, the uh, country. Mm -hmm. Then we sh we have Shell, and we have I don't know if we have another one, but um, I listening to the news this morning, and I the the government saying was saying that. Uh, they need a new price to the to the gas or, or to the. Uh, oh, they use liters. Oh. Okay, you use liters, of course, because everywhere yes. else uses the better measuring system than we do. We use <laughs> gallons. Yes. Okay. Well, we, we use liters, we, liters instead of gallons. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, we do have uh, some questions popping in right here, Mr. Kuki. Uh, ask Mr. Cookie from Twitch. That is a pretty amazing little icon there too. Does the Argentinian government provide grants to game studios like Canada does? Uh, well, from the Argentinian investment trade promotion, we don't um, uh, provide them grants. But what we do is like establish different events at the calendar related to video games. So we try to. Um, allow them to participate from a very little cost mm -hmm. so they, they can have the, the ability to the networking and matchmaking with all the publishers and other um, agents that they consider important, such as uh, GDC or um, indie games business and, and other from, from different, we, we try to choose different markets such as uh, Latin America, Europe and United States. And also we do in collaboration with ADA, which is the Argentina uh, Developers uh, Association, a mm -hmm. business round in, in called uh, Ronda Eva. And what we do is like we try to contact many publishers uh, and allow the Argentine companies to establish uh, meetings. This year is going to be 100% um, online. So if our, some publishers are looking uh, to, to uh, looking us, that we are there. Oh, obviously, they are invited to participate and to have the opportunity to be in contact with more Argentine companies. That's awesome. Well, I hope that you watched the uh, the 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 one earlier today about Epic Mega Grants because they still have sixty million dollars that they're giving out this year. Which is, yes, uh, actually, we have uh, two or three money. people here. He, oh, sorry, sorry. No, go ahead, go ahead. Ah, uh, no, no. I, I was just going to add that we have two or three persons here in Argentina working for Epic as evangelists. So we are aware of the Epic Mega Grants, and they have been given uh, a lot of funding here in Argentina, and we really appreciate. Yeah, that's amazing. So, um, with the lack of virtual or with the lack of I know you talked a little bit about this last of uh, events in real life and now switching to digital events. How, how has that helped you all? Well, uh, maybe I can talk. I think that 
digital events are more accessible mm -hmm. for anyone. Maybe if you have, for example, we, we made last, uh, we are going to make EVA, as uh, Paula says, and maybe it's more easy for publishers instead of coming here by plane and it's maybe Argentina is far away from Europe or United States. So it's very accessible for anyone to, to participate in a digital event. So we hope that anyone can participate in EVA uh, because for us in Argentina, it's very important. Um, I think that, that that's the, uh, maybe presential events are better because are mm -hmm. more, fun, but we are now with COVID, so uh, I, I think that we can have the, the, the Well, you know, I noticed I, when, me going to events, like I would go to PAX, and then there would be like the, the Swiss game developers, and it's a booth with a whole bunch of, you know, of the games, and then for, for different countries. I think maybe someone needs to put an online event on that is just like that, Mr. J. Powell. And talk about that it has like just groups of game developers from different countries. Okay, all right, Jay. Um, yeah, I think that would be interesting. So we 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 just have a couple minutes before we have to bounce over to the next one. So does anybody have any closing thoughts or final things they want to say? Anything they want to share? Well, yes, I wanted to add that I just left over Discord the the websites of Eva. That's the expo that we're organizing over here in Argentina with the Association of Game Developers, that's ADVA. And of course, we hope that we can see you all over there because it will be a great opportunity, apart from this uh, space, to get to know more um, companies that are developing uh, amazing games over here in Argentina. Excellent. Uh, look, we've got some more questions. Uh... Julio says, also the time zone we cover in Argentina can engage either to U.S. and Europe, which is definitely good. Because uh, I'll work with some companies and it's like, man, I got to get up at 4 o'clock in the morning because it's there 8 o'clock at night, you know. Okay, uh, here's another one from Mr. Kuki. When it comes to Spanish translations, and I'm actually really curious about that too, what type of Spanish is normally used, like a regional dialect or castellano? Well, yes, it's the Latin American variant, even though each country speaks a different variant, of course, because that's the thing with Latin American Spanish and the whole Latin American countries. But we are used to receiving content in neutral Spanish or Latin American variant, or even the Mexican one, even though you will get frowned upon if we receive a Mexican um, localization in the Argentinian uh, community. Really? But we'll definitely understand it yeah because there are some expressions that we can definitely tell right away that are not ours uh -huh. and the whole experience is kind of um blown by that particular well, yeah, yeah where i live or on the west coast i mean there's a lot of mexicans and and i mean your 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 um accent is just a little is, i can tell the difference you know i mean i wouldn't know the difference but i can tell that there's a difference all right. Yeah, yeah. I, I, sorry, I want to add some uh, uh, thing. When I, I add a, a channel into my Discord, uh, it was saying in Spanish, obviously, que chulo. We don't say que chulo in, 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 in Argentina. That, that is very Spanish from Spain. So as she was saying each part of, of the region here has their expression and, mm -hmm. and a way of saying. And you can tell when someone is speaking from which part, country is that person for, for the way of speaking or, or the way they are using the, the words and expressions and, 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 and everything. The slang, yeah. Yeah, and there's also something uh, that it's validated as U.S. Spanish. That's uh -huh. a thing, even though you, you may not know it. And that's a specific variant that's spoken within the U.S. So there's that, too. We can discuss this for hours. <laughs> right, right. Is it, so wait, is that like the U.S. Spanish? Is that Americans that speak U.S. Spanish or Mexicans 
Well, those people that live in America or have like Spanish as a second language and has been adapted with the norms of, for example, dates and numbers and figures on the U.S. Um, mm -hmm. um, expression and way of putting things. Oh, so, okay. yeah, it's like a mix between um, the rules and, of the Spanish, the, the English version and the mix of the Mexican Spanish. So, so yeah. Spanglish kind of, right? Yeah. <laughs> That's super Sorry. interesting. Can you add something? Of course, Camilla, go for it. Feel free to pipe oh, up anytime yeah, uh, you want. Re regarding two of the first questions about the, the advantages of um, developing in Argentina and the other one that was about the grants, uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, some um, benefits that we got thanks to ADVA. And one of them were the this prize, this kind of mentorship that we won, that is called uh, Mi Primer Videojo Publicado. In English, is my first uh, video game published. And well, this uh, mentorship uh, gives us give us the opportunity, um, us and other studios from Argentina that are very indie that are starting up to have this uh, very quick uh, mentorship that will help us to to improve the the quality of the games that we're making so that's uh, that's really good too they do it each year and they pick uh, eight games more or less uh, between like uh, 60 games from all argentina the ones that they see that they have publishing potential so that's something that it's very good that we have thanks to adva and other and there are other associations here in argentina that gave us a lot of opportunities here in mendoza that's where we are from in parenthesis the mendoza is next to chile uh, we, we have the best wine just to say and <laughs> well um here we have filmandes that is another association that helped us a lot with um, um funding but for events like uh, they sometimes give us money to to travel and to go to the the business uh, runs and well, that's fun, something that I think that it was worth mentioning too. Excellent, thank you, that is. All right, thank you all so much for being here. We're gonna have to wrap this up. Our next uh, talk is legal perspective on business games. When the, And that's gonna be starting about about four minutes. So please stick around, make sure you click the follow or like, and everyone will be in the Discord. It's discord.gg slash indie game business. If you have any more questions, feel free to ask away. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye-bye.